A very good morning. I am Dr. G. Prasad Rao, a senior psychiatrist at Asha Hospital, Hyderabad. It's always a pleasure to be with you. This is a time where I share whatever I have learned over the last four decades in psychiatry and in a very simple fashion. Today, I want to touch on a very sensitive topic, a topic probably some of you would have heard, would have seen in your close friends or relatives, suicides in child and adolescents. Suicide or attempting suicide, I would put it, is a, a sign and symptom of a psychological distress at that point of the time for any individual. A suicide is not a psychiatric disorder per se, but it is a symptom of something of a psychological disorder. It can be of many kinds and I would like to tell you the most sensitive issue that majority of us think when somebody says that I want to die or talks to you that I want to die, you would like to not to talk about it. You feel sensitive about it, that talking about that is a wrong thing. You might shout a child or an adolescent saying, shut your mouth, don't say that word. But that doesn't shut the mind of a disturbed child or adolescent. Ladies and gentlemen, we know that the first peak in the age wise occurs between the age group of 15 to 25. A suicide, if you see the suicide statistics, at least 20 to 25 percent across the ages would be this age group of 15 to 25, which means the crucial important ages of early adolescence and of course the young, early adulthood. I will come to the reasons very soon, but the most important for you to remember that anyone can attempt suicide. But having said that, self-harm or deliberate self-harm we call it in a better word instead of calling suicide. That is you hurt yourself sufficiently. Self-hurt showing to the family members or to the relatives is a cry for help, a cry that I need some psychological help. A cry to say, look, I'm not well, though on the out of face of mine, I look all right, but I'm not at all well, all right. I'll come to the symptoms, very two, three patterns, I would say, as, a, as we evolve this story. A typically, many times, a child would go through writing exams and passing exams. And that is a continuous feature for us till we settle in the life, isn't it? So passing exam or failing exam are the only op options when we appear for exam. But failure is generally taken individually differently. So a sensitive child, a sensitive moody child or sensitive emotionally upset child takes the failure in a totally different fashion. So the first common pattern we find is any failure for the child apparent, real or perceived. I'll tell you an example. A family expects the child to do a nice program of music and there is a very high expectation about that child by everyone in the family. Almost all relatives, mamas, papas, uh, chikapas, all this uh, maternal uncle, paternal uncles, cousins, everyone expect that this child to do very well in a music festival, for example. But for some reason on that day, the performance was not up to his own expectations. So child can get upset. So that is a time when suddenly, impulsively, impulsively means on the moment of threat, of a few moments, the child might lose control and want to do something silly of harming himself or trying to do some kind of a suicidal attempt. So that can be one pattern. We call it impulsive pattern. The second thing is a very high expectations within the family about the child's performance and child is very sensitive and always expects the parents should be happy 
with his behavior or whatever. Every child wants it. Every one of us have grown up to please our family members, please our parents, please our brothers and sisters, be healthy, be happy, etc. So sometimes when we fail in the expectations, for example, there might be a reason that in the last two, three months we are not reading, the child is not reading very well. And that might be a reason why his performance has dropped a bit. Previously he was getting 100 out of 100. Now in this exam got only 50 or 60. He didn't fail, but there was a significant drop. And usually the typical reaction in the family who wouldn't have observed this closely. If those who have observed closely, they would have told the child, they would tell the child rather, look boy, nothing to worry, go and write the exam. This time you didn't read well, let us focus next time. But you need to read and focus next time. That kind of a bit of being, warmth, empathy, love, affection, but very systematic approach of helping the child in a distress is needed. The second important reason, very, co very common is uh, depressions occurring at childhood and adolescence. Some of you might just wink your eye and say, can depression occur in childhood and adolescence? Yes. Though it is rare, the frequency is about 1 to 2 percent. And 1 to 2 percent means out of 100 children, 1 to 2 children can develop depression during this crucial ages between 7 years to 13, 14 years. But the depression suddenly goes to a peak between 14 years to 21 years. Likewise, anxiety disorders also occur at that age. Anxiety as a symptom is unnecessarily worrying, worrying for small things, getting too much worked up, uh, repeated behaviors, thinking unnecessarily, thinking negatively, all these things is a part of a normal adolescent which he or she goes through. Here, an adolescence is a time, a wonderful time when the child starts getting a unique identity of his or her. Uh, they want to be beautiful, they want to be looked, they want to be appreciated, they want to be accepted. Also at the same time, achieve a lot of things. They have a lot of dreams. So this is a time when some of them who are sensitive, who are upset, who are not focusing on at that momentarily or that particular period, actually go into a kind of a low mood or moodiness can be a hormonal change as well, especially for the young girls. Young girls who start menstruating from the age of 11 to 12 years, they have regular cycles and each cycle can cause a little moody change, especially towards the menstruation time what we call premenstrual distress. So this can be a moody change during that time. So if this moody change occurs during that premenstrual period, that adds to the burden to the that young girl. Likewise, boys have their own set of problems of identity, role models and leadership. So the two sexes are more prone, especially in the young early adolescence and deliberate self-harm. Depression can be one cause, bipolar disorder can be another cause, anxiety disorders can be other cause. Last but not the least is use of alcohol and substance use very early is one more cause for suicidal behavior. Ladies and gentlemen, most of the children or adults who wants to attempt a suicide actually want a help. So if they are saying that life is not worth living, if they say that I'm not happy with my life, if they say I'm not very sad these days, I don't know why, if they say I'm feeling it is better to die or some of these things that I should get some illness, I should die or I should die in my sleep, all these are messages to the family and to the environment, be it friends, be it teachers, be it uh, young adults surrounding the, them. They, it's a message to them to say that they are in distress. What to do? Just sit and talk. Many times just sit and talk helps. How it helps? Once you start, the individual just opens up, might bring out a lot of issues. Today I was in love with my classmate, but the classmate did not look at me. Small, small issues which occurs at that point of time. So. What is important is a 
kind of a meaningful attachment, a mentorship. Many a times this mentorship helps to help the young child and adolescent to grow up into a good young adult. They learn. They have role models, they have teachers, they have friends whom they mold or they have a relatives whom they may they uh, can kind of model themselves into become. So all these things are very useful. But a normal thing which can happen, my suggestion is especially don't ask them to shut up, shut their mouths, especially when they talk about the things which we just mentioned. Just be with them. This is a very temporary cloud for them. And at some point of time, if they're, they are persisting and you are not able to handle, don't feel shy to reach out to a psychiatrist. They are the professionals. They would listen to you, listen to your feelings, understand the feelings, try to see and diagnose a problem and of course help you. Ladies and gen gentlemen, deliberate self-harm or suicidal behavior is but a symptom of emotional distress. And today's psychiatry, modern psychiatry, we can actually make them normal, healthy and a lot of successful stories. You, you would have heard of great cricketers who have attempted suicide during their early career or a tennis players who had thought of taking overdose of medicines to die, etc. But they ultimately came out to become the world champions. So we want every child to be a champion, every child to grow up into a champion in their adulthood. A champion, not necessarily in the games, but champion in their own lives. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the patient listening. I hope to see you very soon with my next Manasarovar YouTube channel. Bye-bye. I am Dr. G. Prasad Rao, a senior psychiatrist from Hyderabad, 